Welcome to my ChatGPT guide for developers, where I'm going to explain to you what ChatGPT is, how it works, and how you can practically use it. In this guide, I will show you how to practically use ChatGPT as a developer. ChatGPT is an AI-powered tool that helps you unlock your imagination and boost your productivity. It has the ability to understand human text, which allows us to ask it questions and receive accurate and relevant responses. ChatGPT is an important technology that is quickly becoming a vital tool in many industries. Its ability to understand and generate human-like text is making it increasingly a popular choice for tasks such as customer service, creative writing, and content generation. As a matter of fact, ChatGPT is already being used for copywriting, blogging, generating product descriptions, writing code, writing documentation, data analysis, and so on. As more and more businesses and organizations adopt ChatGPT, it is becoming an essential skill for professionals in many fields. Understanding how to use ChatGPT and fine-tune it for specific tasks can give you a competitive edge in the job market and open up new opportunities. Additionally, ChatGPT is continuously improving with new and advanced capabilities being added regularly. Keeping up with the latest developments and learning how to use them can help you stay ahead of the curve and stay relevant in your field. As a testament to its importance, ChatGPT exploded in popularity the moment it was released. Popular indexes have recorded that ChatGPT gathered 1 million users in just about 5 days since launch, which is mind-blowing. In comparison, it took Instagram about 75 days to gather that many users, or Spotify which took about 150 days to get to 1 million users. The Google search index for ChatGPT also skyrocketed and the number of Reddit subscribers on r GPT has grown by over 10,000 in just 7 days, which is incredible for a Reddit board. ChatGPT is based on Generative Pre-Training Transformer 3, or just GPT-3. It uses the same techniques and technologies as GPT-3 and has about 175 billion parameters. The GPT-3 model was trained on a colossal dataset gathered from the internet, which allows it to learn patterns and relationships in human language. ChatGPT uses this pre-trained knowledge to generate human-like responses when given a prompt. The key difference between ChatGPT and GPT-3 is that ChatGPT is fine-tuned on specific tasks, such as answering questions or generating data, code, and other types of writing. This fine-tuning allows ChatGPT to generate more accurate and relevant responses for specific tasks. At the moment of this recording, ChatGPT has been trained on data up until 2021. So most of the information that has appeared on the internet after 2021 is not available to ChatGPT, although there may be edge cases. Keep in mind that despite being a revolutionary tool, ChatGPT is not perfect. Sometimes it will respond with reasonable sounding but incorrect answers. Oftentimes the answers it provides will look reasonable, but they won't provide any value. It's also sensitive to input phrasing, meaning that for some questions it may claim to not know the answer, but after slight rephrasing it will give you an answer. ChatGPT is also sometimes biased and might flat out refuse to answer your question if it deems it to be offensive to a certain group of people, or if you're asking it to provide you with harmful instructions. You will also notice that it often reuses the same phrases explaining how it's a language model trained by OpenAI. ChatGPT is often compared with Google, however this is not a fair comparison since ChatGPT is only a text-based AI interpreter capable of human-like communication, and it cannot actually access the internet. It also can't tell you where it learned this information from, so if you ask it to tell you what's the source of the information it provided, it won't be able to tell you. On the other hand, Google is a search engine associated with various other services that allow you to do things like reverse image searching, seeing the information sources, validating information against other sources, it utilizes search engine optimizations to provide you with more relevant information, you can ask it to tell you the time and the weather, and so on. 
So ChatGPT certainly is not a replacement for Google since it works completely differently and serves a different purpose. Also ChatGPT will not remain free in the future because the costs of running it are eye-watering, while Google likely costs a mere fraction of the cost it takes to run ChatGPT. Getting started with ChatGPT is very easy. Simply go to chat.openai.com and sign up for an account. You can use your existing Google or Microsoft accounts as well. Once you log in, you can start writing prompts. Let's start with something simple. I'm going to ask it to generate me a Java method that counts word occurrences in a string. So I'll write, generate a Java method that counts word occurrences in a string. Okay, so I'm going to take this code and paste it in IntelliJ. I'm going to create a new class, word counter, paste the contents, back in the main method, I'm going to print out the results, word count dot for each key and v goes to system out printf and I specify some formatting here and pass it k and v. And there we go, we got the words counted, so the code works correctly. We can also ask it to generate something a bit more complicated, for example, we can ask it to generate code for sending HTTP requests. Generate code for sending HTTP requests in Java using the built-in Java HTTP client. As you can see, it generated a very basic method for sending HTTP requests. However, this HTTP client is too basic and it's not going to prove very useful. However, we can rephrase our request and provide additional information and ChatGPT will generate a better solution. Here is an example. Generate Java code for sending HTTP requests. I want you to name the class custom HTTP client and I want it to have a method for sending get, post, put, and delete requests. Make sure to use the legacy HTTP classes for sending these requests. Also make sure that the request and response body is encoded as UTF-8. Now this will generate a better HTTP client, but ChatGPT may stop halfway with the answer. If this happens, you can simply tell it to continue. Alright, that's finished. So now we have a much better HTTP client. Let's try it out. I'm going to create the class custom HTTP client and copy paste the code from ChatGPT. Then in the main method, I will call these methods. var HTTP is assigned new custom HTTP client and I'm just going to copy paste the rest of the code. So as you can see, I'm just sending some fake data. Run the project. All right, that works nicely. We should definitely write unit tests for our new HTTP client. Let's ask ChatGPT to do it for us. Can you write me unit tests for the previously generated HTTP client? So it wrote some basic unit tests. Let's add them to our code. 
open the test directory and add the new class custom HTTP client test. Paste the generated code. Hmm, our project doesn't seem to have the JUnit dependency. Since this is a Maven project, I need to go to pom.xml and add the JUnit dependency. Let's ask ChatGPT to generate the dependency snippet for us. Generate me the snippet for adding the JUnit dependency to my Maven project. Nice. So I'm just going to add this to my POM XML file and refresh Maven. And there we go. That fixed the issue. Now let's run the unit tests. Okay, so our unit tests are failing because the test API returned a different response. So I'm just going to place a breakpoint on our get test and see what the response is. Alright, let me copy that response and make sure we're comparing against the same string. Run again. And it seems to work now. To be fair, ChatGPT could not have known what kind of response would be returned, so it tried its best guess. It's a mistake anyone could have made. I'm not going to fix the rest of the unit tests because they're most likely suffering from the same mistake, However, you get the idea. Now, since we have this HTTP client, it would be nice to write some documentation for it. Starting off, I would like to have a sequence diagram that explains how it works. Let's ask ChatGPT to generate one for us. Generate me a plant UML code that explains how the custom HTTP client works by using a sequence diagram with examples. Plant UML is just a format for generating diagrams in the IT industry. It's one of the most popular formats. So I can take this code and I can paste it in one of the Plant UML interpreters and it's going to generate an SVG file or a PNG file that shows the diagram. Very nice. We can also ask ChatGPT to convert code from one language to another. So let's convert our custom HTTP client from Java into C Sharp. Convert the custom HTTP client code into C Sharp. And it did it very well. Now I don't have Visual Studio installed so I can't really check if the code works but all things considered it probably works. Now, I would also like it to generate some written documentation with examples. Generate documentation for the custom HTTP client with pretty formatting and examples. Now, that's incredible. So, ChatGPT generated documentation in a markdown format and it provided examples. And we also have the previously generated diagram. So this is pretty much everything you need for good documentation. Other than asking ChatGPT to generate code and documentation, we can also ask it to generate data. So let's say we need to generate some fake data to test something. Generate me a CSV table with believable data with the following format. ID, first name, last name, birth date, country, address, average, monthly spending, and occupation. Okay, we've got some fake data. Now, what if I want this data in a different format? Well, I can just ask ChatGPT to convert it into, say, JSON. Convert this example into JSON. And it did it. ChatGPT is also great at analyzing data. Let's ask it to summarize some logs from the Linux kernel boot process. Summarize these logs. And I'm going to copy paste a bunch of logs. 
So as you can see, these logs are kind of difficult to understand unless you really know what you're doing. But ChatGPT doesn't seem to have an issue with that, and it's explaining these logs to the best of its possibilities. Let's ask it to explain an SQL query. Explain this SQL query. And I'm just going to copy paste some random query I found on the internet. And once again, it's trying its best to summarize what this query does. So most of these examples have been backend related. Let's see some front end action with ChatGPT. I'm going to ask it to generate a landing page for a company that sells software development services. Generate HTML for a landing page for a company named Bezboss that sells software development services. Use Bootstrap for styling. Now this is going to take a while and I'm going to have to tell it to continue with outbreaking formatting quite a few times. All right, it's finished. So now I'm going to create a new file called index.html and I'm going to copy paste the code in there. Open this file in the browser. And look at that, we have a landing page. Now it's not perfect, but it is a decent landing page. Of course, we can always rephrase our prompt to generate a better landing page and whatnot, but considering we haven't written a single line of code, this is great. Sometimes we have a template for a website, but we don't have the content. Well, we can ask ChatGPT to generate it for us as well. Generate copy for a website of a company that sells software development services. Very nice. We can also ask ChatGPT for advice on how to join an open source project. How do I start contributing to Linux kernel development? And as you can see, it gives us a step-by-step -step guide on how to get started. We can also ask it to explain certain domains to us as software developers. Let's say we've been tasked with making a fleet management application, but we don't understand the domain. We can ask ChatGPT to explain it to us. I am a software developer. Can you explain to me the domain of fleet management? And there it goes, it gave us a decent explanation of the domain of fleet management. Now we can always rephrase this and get a different explanation or we can concentrate on a specific explanation. In this case, I would like it to generate me a technical specification for this fleet management project. Generate me a technical specification for a fleet management web application. And there it goes, it generated whatever one good technical specification would need. Now obviously this needs to be expanded upon, but you can do that yourself, or you can use ChatGPT to help you with that as well. Okay, that's enough for one video. I've shown you some amazing examples of how you can practically apply ChatGPT as a software developer. It's truly an amazing tool, and it can help you become more productive. However, keep in mind that ChatGPT is not an oracle. It's a tool that uses advanced, sophisticated statistical algorithms on a colossal data set. You can use it for assistance, but you should never use it as a definitive solution to your problems. Stay well, and I'll see you in the next video.